Hello, in this video I'm going to show you why Christmas tunes are an excellent tool for ear training. I will also show you how to extract melodic phrases and sequences from these simple tunes so you can create new licks of your own. When I was young, every now and again I would ask my dad to play his harmonica. He owned a chromatic harmonica with a button on the side, allowing him to play in any key. The harmonica would only come out of the drawer every year or two when my dad was asked to play it, and I was always amazed that even though he never practiced his harmonica, he could always instantly play whatever song I asked him to play. Basically, if he could hear it, he could play it. If a new film was on the TV, for example, he would listen to whatever music was being played and instantly play me back the theme tune. Whenever I asked him how he was able to instantly play back what he was hearing, he would always tell me that he just knew the major scale really well, and also what the notes in between sounded like. He also demonstrated this skill when he purchased a trombone from a friend. He played trombone at school, although hadn't touched one for over 40 years. He took the trombone he had just purchased out of the case, and once again, just started to play some melodies. A good musical ear is probably the most important skill every musician should develop. Christmas melodies are an excellent way to develop your ear. So whether you love or hate Christmas songs, you hear them every year and they are ingrained into you. So on TV, films, radio, while shopping, in a restaurant, watching school nativity plays, you cannot escape Christmas tunes. So use them to your advantage and enjoy some Christmas ear training. So you can use any major scale pattern you know to play the following melodies. Ideally, you should try to play the melodies using as many different fingerings as possible. This will really help to develop your ears. Many Christmas tunes begin on the fifth note of the scale, so you will certainly get to know the sound of the fifth as you play through these tunes. For all the tunes now coming up, I'm going to use a basic C major scale pattern. So this is the scale pattern. And I'm going to start all of these tunes on the fifth note of the scale. So if I count up one, two, three, four, five, this note G is the fifth note of the scale. Every note in a major scale has got a certain sound quality relative to the root note. The root note sounds like home. It was kind of returned home when you hit that root note. So all the other notes have got a certain sound characteristic relative to that root. The fifth is kind of unstable. It wants to go to the root. So I can either go down to the root, so G to C, or G to C higher. So many Christmas tunes, and other tunes for that matter, play the fifth, and then they go up to the root. So an example would be... So O Christmas Tree. We start on the fifth, jump up to the root. Now when you're trying to work out these tunes, the basic thing is, does the melody go up, does it ascend, or does it go down and descend? And by how far? So, once I've gone, you can then think, oh, the melody goes up after that. And it just goes up a little bit, so maybe if we try the scale. And that's what it is. So you can just got a scale sequence there. So when you're training your ears, one of the easiest things to hear, first of all, is if the melody is going up or down the scale. Then I'm going to go down the scale one note, then from this point go up the scale. Now there's a jump. So you might want to work these tunes out by trial and error to start with if you can't hear the notes and the jumps. So the jump there, if I went... Nope. Nope. Ah, oh, that sounds correct. Must be correct. Then it goes up, bit of a jump there, back to the root note again. The second part of the tune. Nice little sequence you can steal here. I'm starting on the fifth, this time up an octave, so I'm on G on my B string on fret eight. I'm gonna play the note a couple of times. Then I'm gonna come down, kind of a skip. Then I go up to the sixth note of the scale, then down the scale. So the little sequence on here, I'm starting on the fifth, I'm gonna fifth down to the third, there's a jump up to the sixth. Five, five, four, four. Then the same sequence starts again from this new note, from the four. I'm going to do a skip, so the four down to the two, up to the five, then the four, four, three, three. So it's a little melodic fragment that we can actually steal here. I can keep that going down. So if I played from the third, for instance, then again from here, 
keep that going down. So it's just a little sequence that you can use in your improvisations. So that went 5-1. If I played something like, probably recognize this tune. 12 Days of Christmas. I'm not going to play the whole tune because it's really, really long. But it still goes. Five, play it three times, to the one, higher. Then this time we're gonna go down a little bit, then up the scale. Then a bit of a jump, then up the scale. So there's a scale fragment there. Another scale fragment there. We have a jump, down the scale, another jump. Up the scale, down again to the root. Now on this tune, when we get to the five gold rings part, there's a note that's not actually in our major scale, this one here. So it's kind of a sharpened fourth note of the scale. So the fourth note of the scale, we suddenly get, you can hear that's a bit out. Then we're back to the normal scale and so on. So chords can actually help you to hear the melody as well. So you can hear that note, that sharp four, actually fits, it's the third of a D7 chord, but it fits that D7 chord. So be aware of notes that aren't in the scale. Coming back to our five to one, I might play something like Wish you a Merry Christmas. Once again, five to one, really common. Then up the scale, down the scale. Then a jump, up the scale, down the scale. Bit of a jump there. Then we have a big jump here. So when you're work, trying to work these tunes out, you might find at that point, you have to trial and error work out where this note is. So if you went, Ah, there it is. So there's the tune. So again, use a bit of trial and error if you can't hear these intervals, but you do get to know what the jumps sound like the more you play this. So another example of a song where I play five going up to the root. Few jumps in there, but to start off with is basically the scale. You've got the five one one up the scale, then to the three four five six, then a jump scale. Little sequence there, and a few little jumps that you'll have to work out around there. I'm landing on this note, which is the seventh note of the scale. But if I play a G seven chord, it's also the third in a G7 chord. So you can kind of hear the G7, this note, going back to the C. That's a really common melodic idea. And also just before that I played this lick is a common lick that you can use when you're playing over chord changes. Another song that starts on the fifth, but this time I'm not going to jump up to the roots. I'm actually going to go five six, five, three. So five to six is a smaller sound. I'm gonna recognize this. Then we have a jump. A bit of a jump back to the root note. And again, this root note, I've always got that root note in my head whenever I'm working these songs out. It sounds like home. So this section, back to our home sound. Go to the sixth note of the scale, a jump, then the scale, then the very first melody again. So if you remember that, it's no different. We then repeat that section. Then a jump to the same place we did before. Now this is an arpeggio. So it's every other note of the scale. So I'm basically playing this note here. Skip one, skip one. So once you've learned what a scale ascending or descending sounds like, the next thing is to recognize the sound of arpeggios. They're quite easy to hear as well. 
there's the root. So again, the melody at the end. This is a major arpeggio. So far, all these tunes have started on the fifth on my A string on fret 10. This time, I'm still going to start on the fifth, but I'm going to play higher up on fret 8 on my B string because I'm going to descend the scale and I might run out of room if I start too low. So this tune. Now this is actually quite easy to hear because starting on the fifth, it literally descends the scale. Five, four, three, two, one. And it goes up the scale. So one, two, three, back to the one again. So it's just literally down the scale, then up the scale, back to the one. We then have a little sequence. So this bit here, you can steal this as a nice little lick idea. So just putting that finger ring wherever. Sounds quite cool. On the next section of the tune, again, it uses the same idea, but with a different rhythm. Same sequence though. And then, This note here again is the same as we had earlier in 12 Days of Christmas on the five gold rings. We have our the sharpened fourth note of the scale. It then goes back again to the regular scale. I hope this video has given you some ideas to help you with your ear training. Christmas tunes, as said previously, are an excellent tool when it comes to ear training. Good ears take a long time to develop, so you have to make sure you take your time when you're working through these tunes, or any other tunes for that matter. Also be aware that mistakes are actually a good thing. Every time you make a mistake, if you correct that mistake, that is actually how your ears get trained. So try not to get frustrated. If you do find you're getting frustrated because you cannot work out the notes for a tune, then maybe it's time to take a break and come back later. Stick with it though, because over a period of time your ears will develop and you'll find this kind of thing much easier. So if you did enjoy this video, then please give it a like and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Bye for now.